US chip giant Intel Corp 7 billion US dollar planned investment in Penang is expected to create over 4,000 jobs as well as over 5,000 construction jobs in the country, according to International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali. The senior minister highlighted that the latest investment bolsters Malaysia's role as a prominent site in Intel's global manufacturing network. Azmin adds that the investment also allows Malaysia to move up the value chain in terms of technology transfer and capacity building. Intel CEO Patrick P. Gelsinger says the investment will build a rich ecosystem in building up overall technology capabilities of the Malaysian market. He says that Intel will be expanding research and development work in the country, while for the expansion on manufacturing, the group is targeting a completion date somewhere in 2024. Gelsinger says that the new expansion of its existing facility is expected to support Intel's advanced packaging technology. Malaysia accounts for 13% of global chip packaging and testing and some 7% of the world's semiconductor trade passes through the country. Meanwhile, according to Gelsinger, the current global semiconductor chip shortage is expected to persist until 2023 as industry players need more time to expand capacity to address the pent-up demand due to the pandemic. He says Intel had expanded its Arizona and New Mexico facilities and is expected to announce its expansion plans in the US and Europe early next year. According to Gelsinger, as players bump up capacity, the semiconductor industry this year will grow more than it has in the last two to three decades. EcoWorld Development's net profit dropped 43% to $42.8 million for the fourth quarter of FY21 from a year ago on lower contribution from its Malaysian JVs and international arm EcoWorld International due to the lockdown. Revenue was up 4.8% to $666 million from $635.5 million previously on higher sales. ECW declared a second interim dividend of $0.02 cent per share. For FY21, net profit improved 14% to $182.6 million, while revenue ticked up 2.3% to 2.04 billion ringgit. ECW says it achieved sales of 3.5 billion in FY21, 23% higher than its 2.86 billion target. President and CEO Datuk Chang Kim Wa says all its three regions managed to outperform the targets set and strong increases were recorded across its residential, commercial and industrial portfolios. He says based on the results and its improving balance sheet, ECW has set a sales target of 3.5 5 billion for FY22. As for EWI, it sank into the red for the fourth quarter of FY21 with a net loss of 56.3 million versus a net profit of 17.4 million posted a year earlier. Revenue dropped 39.5% to 34.75 million. According to EWI, the numbers were mainly due to share of losses in JVs and higher finance costs following the cessation of capitalization costs on general borrowings in tandem with the handover of apartment units in Yarrow one in Melbourne. For FY21 as a whole, net profit plummeted 83% to 13.6 million, while revenue declined 14.9% to 572.7 million from 673 million. EWI says it recorded 1.377 billion in sales in FY21, close to the 1.382 billion achieved in FY20. EWI President and CEO Dato Tio Leong Seng says that while FY21 was a challenging year, due to a mix of lockdowns, border closures and higher stamp duties, he is expecting FY22 to be a better year for property sales in London. Theo says in FY22, EWI will continue pursuing the strategic decision made in FY21 to prioritise cash generation and has set a higher sales target of $2 billion to be achieved for FY22. All those aged 60 above, as well as those who took Sinovac, have to get a third shot by February or they will be deemed not fully vaccinated, says Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin. In a statement, he said if they hadn't gotten their booster jabs by February 2022, they would not be eligible for the facilities provided to those who have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. According to him, the move was in line with the proposal by the World Health Organization through its strategic advisory group of experts on immunisation. 
immunisation. Kairi adds that the proposal was confirmed by the COVID-19 Immunisation Task Force booster on December 8th. He also said the Drug Control Authority has approved the Cominarty vaccine produced by Pfizer-BioNTech, Coronavac vaccine produced by Sinovac and AstraZeneca vaccine for use as a booster dose. Kairi says further to that, the Technical Working Committee has recommended a booster dose be given to all residents aged 18 years and above. BS Industry saw its first quarter FY22 net profit drop 41% to 39.4 million from the 66.7 million posted last year as top line also declined. Revenue for the quarter slipped 2% to 968 million. Even so, the group declared a first interim dividend of 0.4 cent per share, which was lower than last year's 1.2 cent per share dividend. BSI says revenue dropped due to lower contributions from its Malaysian operations, which was affected by higher costs in both labour and raw materials, higher depreciation from new facilities, as well as COVID-19 pandemic-related costs mandated by the government. It also notes that its Malaysian operations started mass production for a new key client during the quarter, but had yet to achieve the optimal level amid supply chain disruptions that lowered operational efficiency. VSI says it is cautiously optimistic about its outlook and expects the financial performance for the remaining quarters of FY22 to be satisfactory on a balance of factors. The group says that overall demand remains robust and is largely expected to be sustained and that it is currently in discussions with key customers on potential new orders. The SI says that it has also stepped up hiring of local workers following the ban on foreign workers entering the country since last year and says that while the situation is challenging, it is still manageable. The 1MDB Tanore trial resumed Thursday as Datuk Sri Najib Razak was allowed to attend proceedings despite his Mysajatra status still showing yellow, indicating casual contact with a COVID-19 positive case. Najib's counsel, Datuk Hari Harantara Singh, informed the judge that his client's attendance was not in breach of any governmental regulations and judicial rules. On the stand today was former 1MDB director Tan Sri Ismi Smile, who testified that he was worried about his own safety and the safety of his family when he gave his testimony to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission in 2018 regarding the inner workings of the government-owned investment fund. Ismi said this under cross-examination from Hariharan and that he did not strike any deal with MACC in order for him to escape prosecution. However, Ismi did not elaborate where the danger to his family's safety would have come. Ismi, who is also the former MD and CEO of Lembaga Tabung Haji, then denied the lawyer's contention that he was merely testifying testifying against Najib as per the request of the MACC. Ismi says he only gave the MACC a statement of facts and that he was responsible for those facts. The trial resumes on January 25, 2022 with Ismi still on the stand.